Hello, everybody. And this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Enam today with us, and he is going to join us. And we're going to explore the intricate paths of self-discovery, love, and relentless pursuit in the divine truth. He is an author. He's an artist. And he also does acting. And he is involved with his foundation and he's an amazing individual and he focuses to embark on transformation and towards self-awareness and understanding and learn how to unravel the layers of self unveil um, secrets that we have held inside. But sometimes we need to learn, let go of those secrets and we need to understand in a deeper level who we are, what we're capable of being and the beauty between all of that combined. Now today I'm going to give the stage to Enam and he's going to tell us a little about himself and what he does and it's a pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. You are a wonderful individual who has accomplished so much. You know, you just recently launched a book and I'm very excited for you and you know, you do a lot of different things and I'm very excited for you to let everybody know who you are and and what you do. Well, thanks a lot, Stacy, for having me on the podcast. I'm I'm honored to be with you today. Uh, I'm a great admirer of you and your work, and uh, it's my privilege to be here today. And that's very true. That my uh, I don't know. You have written twenty some some books. This is my second book in twenty years, and so uh, it takes a whole lot. It was published um, on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and fifty other outlets. Um, on the 16th of August. Um, and uh, it, it ran for many days as number one in its category, but it still is on top right now in the next few. And uh, it's called The Whispers of the Flight. And I would love to talk about it. I'd love to learn about it. Can you tell us a little about the book? Sure, sure. Um, just to give you the inspiration, where I got the idea from was that a uh, little sad story to begin with that I had a, two years ago, I had a knee surgery, knee replacement. And it kind of went bad that it developed uh, 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 a blood clots, what people call uh, DVT in the me medical term. And all my four vessels were blocked and it was very dangerous because if any clot had dislodged, you know, then I would be here today. So I, I was given specialized medications. I was, to, I was told to keep my leg elevated, don't move. And the whole exercise lasted two, two and a half months and very painful time of my life. You know, it was extremely painful. Um, so while I was in that condition, my son brought me this book a huge book because I'm an artist. It had a lot of illustration in it. So he made sure to give me something that I would look at it under those conditions. So I opened it up and I read it and it was actually an English translation of a poem uh, that was originally written 900 years ago in Farsi or Persian language uh, by a guy named Fariduddin Attar. Uh, this book was translated into 80 different languages. And it, people have done plays on it. People have done different things on it. Movies have been made on that. Um, and he was actually the, one of the teachers of Rumi. When Rumi was 10 years old, he was sent to him for a few days to learn how to write what they call musaddas, the form of poetry they use in that part of the world, still do actually. So Rumi's initial learning was from him. And and Rumi's own Musaddas or his book is actually exactly in the same pattern as Attar's poem. Anyhow, the poem, story in the poem is of birds basically, and it's all metaphorical. And it talks about our inner feelings that we all have and how to face them and how, you know, how to face those challenges. And the story is that all the birds of the world get together and they say, you know, Every nation has a king, and we don't have one. And the hoopoe bird, which is considered to be a holy bird in, let's say, Abrahamic religion, because the same bird helped King Solomon do a lot of things in its Bible-based stories, which uh, this bird is mentioned. And um, 
So the Hopi bird says, you know, I know that there is a king of uh, of our kind and name of the king is Simurg, S-I-M-U-R-G-H. And I know that he lives in Kohekov, which is the mountains of Kof. And I can take you there, but it's not going to be an easy journey because there are seven valleys that we'll have to cross and they're all very difficult valleys. So the birds say, no, we want to go because we have to see who this king is. So he takes the lead and everybody follows. At, wow. every, at every valley, first, for example, the first valley's name is Valley of Quest. Mm -hmm. so everybody has to understand the meaning of the quest, you know, that we all have to uh, have this feeling of how to discover, how to see, what to see, you know, the, the open up our mind to the word of quest. And he explains them in the first valley. And a lot of words say, you know, we can't go further. This is too difficult for us to comprehend. And some of the birds turn back, but a bunch of birds proceed further. The second valley was a valley of love. So he explained them the, the true meaning of love, what that is at that stage. And, and that gave the birds the energy to move forward. Otherwise, it was extremely difficult and so on and so forth. So, you know, third one is bewilderment. And then the final one is the annihilation. Annihilation is that when you merge yourself as the Rumi's concept is that we are part of the universe and the universe is part of us. We are all one, the unity concept. So that's the final stage. So at each stage, some of the birds return and finally 30 birds reach to the, uh, to the destination. And uh, however, what they see is a huge mirror and nothing else at that stage. And they say, where is the king? And, and Hoppo bird says, look closely in the mirror and all they see is 30 birds you know, in the mirror. So basically the concept is that you and us are all part of the universe, hence part of the divinity, whatever your belief may be of the divine, you know, whether it's God, Allah, or whatever you want to call it, you know, it is uh, uh, basically we are part of that entity and that entity is part of it. And that's the concept that we all have to believe. But we cannot believe and comprehend unless we cross those seven valleys, kill our ego, open up our minds and hearts to be able to understand that. So that's the whole poem. So when I read that some of the translation in English, uh, it did not give me the whole concept clearly. So I ended up retaining a professor uh, and we had a Zoom call very similar to this twice a week. And I learned the whole poem in six months. She explained me the actual meaning of everything. And then we went through the whole seven valleys and understanding the whole concept. When I was done, I said, what do I do with this knowledge? I have all this. If I sit with my sons and talk to them, they would have no idea what I'm talking about. So I decided to take the same concept that's in the poem and write a novel, fiction, okay, in such a way that an average American reader can follow and understand the language and the concepts too. So I took two uh, youngsters from New York and who are into hiking and trekking and uh, and they fly to to Morocco, the Atlas Mountains. It's very similar. They are also have seven peaks in the seven in this in the in the mountain range. And at each and they have a sage. They have a leader who you know every trekking group has a leader who mm -hmm. is very aware of this poem and the and the mythology and the and the and the philosophy behind that. And uh, they also, the trekkers also face challenges at each location, each valley, each peak. And he uses the same parables to basically convey the message, how to find energy, how to know yourself, what you actually need to know and proceed further. And at the end of the, of the day, they reach uh, their destination. And my, in short, the whole concept of, of the book is that what a reader would take home with it, you know, it's just not just uh, not a novel. It's not just a literary piece. You know, I wanted to give a message that can actually benefit the readers and the you know your listeners, for example. So there are. I'm going to summarize into four messages, if you allow me. You know, first one being is the self awareness, which you mentioned earlier, right? 
-hmm. which, uh, for example, the Socrates said that they know yourself, okay? And he believed that understanding yourself is the key to all wisdom. Yeah. And, uh, and by recognizing our own limitations, we can start to seek true knowledge. And that was Socrates' vision. And that's what I have tried to explain in simple terms in the, in the book, you know, why self-awareness is so important and how you can understand yourself, who you are, what your purpose in life is. The second one is the, is the unity and oneness, uh, which is basically that we are all part of one. We are, you know, the, the animal kingdom, the, the plants, us, the, the galaxies, the universe, everything is actually one. And we are all connected to each other in one way or, or, or the other. And in, for example, in Christianity, uh, just to give you an example, is that the church is called the body of Christ, right? And in meaning all believers are united in Christ form and spiritual body. And this idea highlights the unity, unity of all Christians with Christ and each other. Similarly, the book talks about oneness of the universe. All of us are individuals and all part of the universe and the universe is part of us. And that's exactly what Rumi also said, you know, what I said at the end. Third message that your, your, your listeners and the readers can take home is the journey over destination. Journey is not as important as the destination is. And for example, like in, uh, uh, in the... Uh, novel the lord of the rings okay and uh, how the hero grows gro uh, the, the growth of the hero has challenges and during the journey uh, matter more than reaching the goal actually facing all those, all those challenges was more important than reaching the goal and my uh, book also teaches that, that the journey builds character and wisdom and that's, you know, we need to focus more on the journey because that's what where you get the form. And finally is the cosmic unity, which basically is the cosmic unity is, is its realization can infuse the sense of belonging, the harmony and never being alone. So yeah. these are the four main messages that I have hit home basically or tried to, for people to able to read this novel and understand in addition to enjoying a novel. You know, the story in the novel. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So it really could show people how to really figure out who they are, that self-discovery, that awareness, then learning, like you said, how to live in one's limitations, because that's very hard for a lot of people to do. A lot of people don't like the word limitations. They want right. to do what they want to do and how they want to do it. But in order to be productive, in order to really to, to, to live a fulfilling life, you really have to set limitations according to what your life is like, you know, and, you know, and being able to, you know, learn how to drop that ego, like you mentioned, you know, there are so many people out there that have so much to give, but their ego is so high that they do not get their message across and they are unable to help others. They aren't able to be the mentors of others because of the way they think and their their ego gets in front of them and their 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 ability to be humble and look at others as is you know exactly they can't you know i'm going to add one thing if you allow me on the same sure. subject is that the message in the book and the poem is that we are all moving towards one destination we may have different paths but we are mm -hmm. all moving into the same destination and the idea is if we learn how to cross our path without stopping, looking at others and becoming judgmental, okay? And uh, considering ourselves superior than others for any given reason, okay? And, and, and that's what the book is trying to sell, tell us, don't do that, okay? Keep focus on yourself, on your path, stay humble, don't consider yourself better than others, and your own destiny. And that's destiny, you can call an ocean, for example. And that ocean can be, a, you know, you, somebody can call it a, a god or whatever, you know, it's, 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 it's something that we are all gonna merge into. So the two people arrive at the same destination to the ocean. One arrives in the form of a pure drop of water because that person 
did exactly what he or she was supposed to do. It merges with the ocean. Ocean recognizes it as a pure water, accepts it, okay? And that little drop becomes part of the ocean and, and then travels with the ocean as an ocean. And the second person arrives who stops at multiple locations, become judgmental on others, does not leave the ego. It also arrives, he or she also arrives at the destination, it arrives in the form of a pebble, okay? The ocean says, welcome, come on in. And the pebble goes in and drops in the, at the bottom of the ocean, stays at that location till eternity and never becomes part of the ocean. So that's the whole concept is that if we cleanse ourselves, if we go through our inner cleansing process, takes care of ourselves the way it needs to be, be helpful for others, be a guide for others, not judgmental to others, then at the end of the day, you're gonna be a pure drop of water and you're gonna merge with, with this divinity, ocean or whatever you wanna call it as a pure form. That's the message. I love that. I love that. And it's very, it goes very deep. And when you think about that, it's so true. You know, if, if you take the time to really look at yourself as a person and you look at yourself honestly, and you look at your faults and you look, you look at your, your, your strengths. So you look at your strengths and weaknesses and you work on improving the things about you that need to be improved. And that comes with honesty, whereas some, it's very hard for people to be honest with themselves, especially about their own faults. And to, to be able to work on those and to change those and to become a better person and to cleanse yourself, you know, mind, body, and soul, you, you actually, you do feel, you do feel like a part of the ocean. You don't, you're, you know, you, you feel a freeness, you know, you feel right. life has given you a, a second chance. You feel enlightened, you know, right. it's a different it's a different feeling when you carry all that, you know, ego and dishonesty and, and, and you, we focus on the faults and the negativity that weighs you down just like a pebble. And it brings you to the bottom of the ocean. Absolutely. Absolutely. My apologies for taking so long, but I wanted to send the message across. No, I love it. I love it. And so this just, this book just recently came out. You said it came out this past week or so. That's correct. It's almost eight, nine days, something like that. And it's doing wonderful on Amazon. It's called, again, The Whispers of the Flight. And again, my name is Enam, which is easy to remember, I-N-A-M. If you do a search on Amazon, either way, my name or the book, it will pop up. And by the way, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the cover page of the book is something that I painted myself. And I, as, as you know, I'm a professional artist. I wanted to stay true to the, to the message in the book and, and uh, give my, uh, you know, respect to the original poem uh, that yeah. gave me the inspiration. So it's a, it's, 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 it's a cover story is birds. And it's, uh, uh, it's, I get a lot of comments about that, actually. Even I got an email from Amazon saying is one of the prettiest covers that they have actually published. Wow. So uh, I'm very uh, pleased with it, honored with it, uh, that people like, like it. So you're going to like the, not only the cover, but you will also like the content of the book I show you of that. Oh, I love it. And, you know, people aren't aware, but you're a very famous artist in Europe. They have, you are you're very well known for all your artwork and you do have a website that is, it shows your work and shows your portfolio and all the, all the pieces that you've done in the past. Can you tell us a little about that? Absolutely. Um, so uh, just to give you a little bit, I'm a polio patient. Uh, when I was less than a year old, I was infected with it. Uh, that, uh, uh, you know, on my right leg and my right foot turned 45 degrees and my right uh, knee turned 15, uh, turned 15 degrees when I was a kid, a baby. And I was, it was difficult for me to walk. When I turned five, I was admitted to in school. It was very difficult because, you know, the kids can be brutal, you know, um, and I was very depressed on a daily basis. Um, my art teacher saw that and she took me in the room and she started teaching me art on a daily basis while the kids, it was all boys school, when kids were out playing in the PT time and the recess and all that, she, I was inside the art room with her five days a week for five years. 
from first grade until the fifth grade. When I turned 10, you know, 10 years old, I had a couple of surgeries done. My foot became straight and I was able to walk properly and take part in other activities. But she gave me all the fundamentals, the basics of art. And I was drawing like a professional when I was turned, when I turned 10. Yeah. So I continued that, but I was got busy with my college and university. I had to come into the U.S. for my master's in 1984. And uh, then I was exposed for the first time with oils and canvases in the U.S. Because to be frankly speaking, I was not able to afford canvases and oils where I came from. Yeah. And so my uh, my good luck that I was here and I was exposed to it and I loved it and I did everything. I did portraits, I did landscape, I did seascapes and this and that. And I started traveling because of my job to Eastern Europe, countries like Finland, uh, Russia. And that's where I saw the most beautiful birch trees in the world. And I started painting those trees and I, it, there was just a love at first sight type of thing. That I uh, and then I, I, my art consultant told me to stay with one team if I want to become a professional artist. I can't do everything. People <laughs> should be should people should be able to recognize this is your art. Now I could do still a few pieces for my own sake or my family and friends, but as far yeah. as commercial area is concerned, I should stay with one team, one style. So I stayed with landscapes. But my technique is very different. I use very heavy canvas and I use enormous amount of oil. So if you look at my paintings on the, from the side, they're at least half an inch, in some cases an inch thick of paint on canvas. And I developed my own technique. Uh, I, uh, I was at Home Depot and I saw a lot of sawdust on the floor. I picked it up and I brought it home and I mixed it up with the oil paint and applied that on the canvas and that gave me what I was looking for because oil takes two months to dry otherwise. And it's oh. very difficult to fold canvas if you want to ship somewhere because it breaks, you know? Yes, yes. And this technique of mine gave me both the things. It would dry in two to three days. And also I was able to fold and ship as, as you said, that 80% of what, uh, what I do goes to Europe. And, uh, and I'm known for my landscapes. My, my website is inamgallery.com, I-N-A-M-G-A-L-L-E-R-Y.com. If you have an interest, anybody, please go on the website and look. And what you will see on the main screen, I'm in very famous places, museums, a lot of Hollywood stars have my stuff and, and all that. Uh, but there is a painting that I'm very proud of. It's in Carnegie Hall in New York. It's very close to you. Yes. Um, Stacy, you might want to visit. A third floor lobby uh, uh, has my largest painting that I did, which is 17 feet tall and 14 wow. and a half feet wide. Wow. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a huge painting and it has become a sacred painting. People come and touch and pray. Uh, on a daily basis because they saw the owner doing it who is a billionaire and they mm -hmm. think that if they will also do they might also become a billionaire so <laughs> I'm, I'm proud to say that I did something that has become sacred and people go and touch and feel and and, and pray this third right. floor lobby uh, Carnegie Hall and if you go on my website you will see because I finished the painting in New York at location so there you will see some movie of that too that I'm painting and finishing it up and then you will see the finished product also. That is so, truly amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not your, it's that far from you, Stacey. You might want to visit sometime too. No, I definitely will. I would love to see it. Yes, yeah. I saw I saw your, your portfolio. I was truly amazed by it. I thought it was beautiful, the pictures yes. that you've created and the artwork you've created. It's amazing. Thank now, you. You, you even do life coaching, you were saying. You know, you have a lot of experience. You've gone through a lot in life. You know, this book has changed your life in many ways. It opened your 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 pathways of knowledge in, in many different directions. And you you share it with other people by helping others. Can you tell us a little about your life coaching business? Absolutely. Um, um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not, but I founded a, a charity locally here in Atlanta area called Glitter of Hope Foundation, which was initially uh, targeting only the refugee community coming into the Atlanta especially single moms and their children, orphans. Uh, they would come in and, you know, the, the, the 
facility from the government basically provided living for three months and then they're supposed to be on their own. And these people, these kids or these moms had never seen a day in school in their lives. And, and assuming that they will become so proficient in three months that they will be able to sustain their lives and live happily in the U.S. is, is comical. Yeah. So we focused on, on these women and we provided them after school, you know, uh, schooling, basic schooling, English, te- English language and basic maths, uh, teaching them how to drive, uh, basic laws, how to live in the U.S., what to follow and what to do. Uh, kids were facing lots of issues in school. So we provided, we have now three after school programs where they have about 400 kids who come to study. Uh, and uh, and then the program expanded into other single moms and other elderly and sick people. So as a result of that, there were a lot of people who were coming in with a lot of stress, a lot of depression, a lot of mental issues because they saw so many things that we can't even imagine. Yeah. And uh, and there was a need to sit with them and counsel, you know, teach them, give them comfort, give them confidence, give them encouragement. So I was fully involved with that process. We used to do seminars, we used to do one by one, and then community at large, people, other people in Atlanta here, and they start calling me, and I start spending a lot of time on the phone or Zoom call or face to face, you know, going one with no prior training of any kind. Yes. So I decided to basically go through our training process, get properly certified to make sure what I'm supposed to say and what not to say. So uh, I went through all that, got me certified and started an organization or a company called Elevate Life. I'll send you the, uh, all these uh, URLs. Uh, and uh, um, you know I only talk to uh, two uh, clients a day, not more than that, keep uh, a complete focus on what, I, what I'm providing so that I can provide quality. So, and we deal with different issues of life and I'm a life coach. I'm not a medical person, okay? I don't advise anything on the medical side, no medications we discuss, but we talk about, you know, basic stuff that you mentioned that what I learned throughout my life is facing multiple challenges and dealing all these things at the same time, reading the poem and other books. I'm an avid reader. I read a lot. So I read a lot, learned a lot as a result of that. And also I tried to put that in my book, actually, you know, yes. how to face all those challenges. So that's that's how the the life coaching part comes into play. Again, the name of the website is elevatelife.guru, G-U-R-U. So if somebody wants to go and have a look at it, uh, welcome to do that. And can they book a consultation with you on the website? Yes, I'm, I think I do have few slots open. I'm, I, I, as I said, I only do two uh, clients a day, so I don't take too many. Uh, mm-hmm. But I should be able to have in the next two, three days, next two, three uh, weeks, a few slots open. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Now, if you had to um, take what we talked about today, what are some of the important things that you'd like to emphasize? Because you hit a lot of really important topics. And what are the things that you'd like to get across to the listeners? Well, uh, we, we, we all, you, you mentioned that, we all have limitations. There isn't a single person in this world that does not have limitations. So when we face a challenge or a limitation, we consider ourselves a little different than others. We, our, our self-esteem is hurt and, mm-hmm. uh, and we start putting our, ourselves into these red holes and that basically is something that we should definitely avoid. Keeping in mind that, you know, we all are limited in many ways. You know, if we are limited in one way, I can assure you that each and every person has been blessed or given a gift that other people have not been given. It's just right. a matter of identifying, as we talked about in the big beginning of the book, self-awareness is mm-hmm. to understand what's your gift in life. Right. And, A, that's finding your gift, B, trusting in yourself, and three, enhancing your gift to be able to share with others uh, in the world. And that should be our pattern. We should not go back, but we should go forward, actually. And to be very honest, if I didn't have the polio, if then I didn't have uh, all the challenges that I faced, uh, you know, I by going and speaking on behalf of UNICEF or Bill, Bill and Linda Gates Foundation, 
I meet so many good people. So I, you know, networking is phenomenal that if I had not been doing this because of my polio, I wouldn't be able to meet all those people. So actually yeah. every so-called limitation has so many other benefits built in that we don't recognize that we can use and benefit out of it. So we all have to find, find out our gift, enhance on it, and then definitely do not forget to share with other people. Oh, 100%. 100%. I agree totally with you. I, I, and those are things that really people have to take to heart and really understand. It's that it's not about feeling sorry for yourself. It's not about like, what was me? You know, you really everything that happens in, in your life, if you, if you can look at it and try to draw something positive out of the negative, you will learn from it and it will make you stronger, you know, and, and anything that happens in life, we always come out of it. If you think about it, you know, any obstacle that we face, you know, at times at that moment, it, it seems very detrimental. It seems overwhelming and a lot of emotions spring from it. But in the end, if, if you think about it, we always get through it. And if you could look at what you learned and you could look at how, what it, it's done for you, like it's made you a stronger person, it's giving you knowledge, it's giving you a different look on life, it's giving you maybe appreciation for life that you didn't have before, you know, having gratitude for what you ha have, because many times we don't realize you know, how lucky we are. We think about what we don't have instead of thinking about what we do have until those things are taken away. Then we realize how valuable they were. And if we, if we keep those things in mind and we, and we value them and we live, you know, by, by those, 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 uh, those rules of, of thinking about, you know, appreciation and gratitude and kindness and love and, and understanding ourselves and what our body needs and what our mind needs and, and, and fulfilling those needs, we can really become exceptional people and, and to really, we can elevate to any level in life if we put our minds to it, as long as we have the self-determination and the willingness to work hard to get them. And everybody is capable. It's just being able to really focus on becoming that person and what we need to do to become that person. You said it beautifully, Stacey. That's exactly mm -hmm. what life is all about, that if we can understand the message that you just gave, you know, we all will at least be happy, you know, and happiness is everything. You know, if we are content and happy, then then we have reached our goal, our destiny. And, uh -huh. and that's exactly, you know, you and I are trying to teach and I'm learning from you. And uh, hopefully we can, we can both convey the same message uh, to the people at large. And that's mm -hmm. our contribution to, to the world. Yes, yes, 100%, 100%. And I think everybody has something special about them that they could contribute to the world. They just have to look inside themselves and exactly. really, and just have self-value and self-worth. Because if they, if they have that self-value and, and that self-worth, they'll know that their message, their meaning in life means something. And they, they'll be able to have the strength to share it and help others. Exactly, exactly, absolutely. So I hope your readers will read the book and I, I'm going to send you an image of the book that I have not sent. If you can include that in the, in, in the podcast, because I'm very proud of it, um, because oh. how it came out and it looks very pretty. Uh, so it will uh, look your podcast, hopefully a little prettier too. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so include that in it if you can, and I'll send yeah. you all the URLs, especially on, on the side of uh, life coaching. If, I'll send you my URL. If uh, uh, if you can list that, if people want to, if clear of you uh, come to the program, and if they can mention your name in it, then I can prioritize them and make sure that uh, you know I I pay the time and attention as soon as possible. I love it. I will put all the information in our description box so everybody will have it. So if everybody, if you're listening, go into our description box. You'll have all the links there where you can contact Enam and all his information about his podcast, about, about today's podcast, where he talked about the foundation. He talked about the book. He talked about, you know, his artwork and his gallery Everything will be in there where you can visit all the different websites and you can find him on all different social networks as well. I'm sure you're listed on all the different social networks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this has been wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to include before we go? 
I'm going to say to your listeners that, you know, have trust in yourself. Have trust in yourself. Believe in yourself. That's the first, you know, the foundation is believing in yourself. Start with that. Take one step at a time. And if we believe in ourselves, take one step at a time, we will succeed. I love it. This has been a wonderful experience, you know, I'm, I'm so glad you came on this show. I hope you'll come on again and we can go deeper into a lot of these different subjects absolutely. that you talked into. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Stacey. It's an honorous pleasure is all mine. <laughs> you have a great day. You too. Take care. You too.